Good afternoon to everyone uh, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, today, our uh, CEO is not going to be present because she has a meeting, but uh, I'm going to introduce um, our company and our uh, this webinar, and then I will introduce myself and start to, uh, the webinar without a delay. Um, we, we, I am speaking in behalf of TM Comas. We are in Spain, as you know, in, near Girona. And uh, now, today, we are going to talk about laser cladding. So this, this webinar is, is, is a part of a series of webinars that we are, we are doing, we are offering to our customers and friends and collaborators. And uh, not only we are going to do this webinar in, in, in live, like today, but in a few days it will be uploaded in our YouTube channel. So um, we will be the right time to distribute the link to this webinar to your colleagues or to all of you that can be interested to, to watch it again. Um, let me allow some, a couple of minutes uh to other participants that may come and i will start uh, uh soon okay the, the duration of of this webinar today's webinar is about 40 to 45 minutes um is it a webinar so it's not allowed for you to to speak to me to communicate with me uh, but, uh, of course, you can do it uh, uh, when you want by using the chat, um, the chat option. Uh, we, you, you can write some, some, some sentences in, in the chat, as you have already done, telling me that you, that you were hearing me perfectly. So, um, so just if you, win, if you need some, some explanation, some <clears throat> some um, more information, or uh, you have lost something. Do, so don't don't uh, don't be shy. Just just ask. Just ask. Just type. Uh, please hold on. I need you. I need you to ask something. Okay. Uh, the only thing is that sometimes is from my side it's difficult to see when someone in the chat is asking me. So if, if I am not replying you instantly, um, don't, don't get mad. Uh, it's because I am not, I am not always uh, concentrated in the little, little, small, tiny uh, red dot that is, is popping when someone is, is chatting me. So, so um, okay. But um, in any case, at the end of the webinar, uh, it will be the right time to ask questions. And if during the presentation, I have, I've not even capable of, 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 uh, of uh, responding your, your questions, it would be the right time to do it at the end of, of the presentation because I, it, uh, at the end of the, of the presentation, I will be uh, looking at the screen and looking at the, at, the, at the chat. So it's about four minutes to, to uh, plus, plus three o'clock. So it's the right time to, to start. There are several uh, uh, participants amongst you, so let's, let's go. I'm going to share the screen, um, and hopefully you will enjoy of this uh, webinar, uh, uh, and, and let's go. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit. I, my name is Jauma Jaumanin. I am the technical director of TM Comas. I am I am chemist as a as a basic uh, studies. I am chemist. Then I I made my PhD in material science, specifically in thermal spray coatings, in the University of Barcelona. I make some stages in Canada and Finland and so on. But then, I, uh, after ending my PhD, I decided to, to jump to the industry. 
and I started to, to work in a, in a hard facing and, uh, and, and welding consumables uh, manufacturer. And then uh, I soon came to, to TM Commerce more than 14 years ago. So I have uh, uh, more than 14 years experience in the workshop repair, uh, in rotary machine repair, coatings, brazing, heat treatment, materials, uh, welding, and during my uh, my um, my career in TM Commerce, I also uh, make uh, the studies of uh, European welding engineer. So I am also a welding engineer. That means that I am theoretically um, uh, able to talk about welding, cladding, and all this stuff. Okay. So um, after presenting myself. I want to proceed to the presentation, whose name is uh, main laser cladding, main characteristics, and how we apply it to meet industrial needs. This is an exact translation of our Spanish title. Uh, last week, I presented this, uh, this webinar in Spanish for our Spanish customers, and now this, this week is, 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 uh, is going to be presented in English. Uh, if I get wrong in some in some words or in some uh, sentences, uh, forget me because um, forgive me because um, I I am not an English speaker, so I will do my best. So to to start with, we have to understand why is uh, what is a laser beam and what are the difference between laser beam and and um, and the typical light of a bulb. So the, the laser has some characteristics that make it very special for, for a manufacturing, to, like a, as a manufacturing tool, no? So it has, uh, it is monochromatic, that means that it has only one wavelength or a very, very narrow gap and any, a, a very narrow range of, of wavelength. Uh, it propagates in parallel, so it's not divergent. It oscillates in, in phase, so it's coherent and it has an extremely small focus. So that means that we can focus it very, very, uh, or, or as much as we want to have a very high uh, uh, energy uh, density or high, very high intensity of, of energy. Uh, on the other hand, if, if we compare with a conventional bulb, that has a different wavelength, so all the visible spectrum uh, it has a divergent um, waves, they are non coherent and it's focusless. It's co and so it is a, a, a low intensity source, and we are not able to use it apart from, from lighting. We are not using it for anything else. So we have a, a very powerful and special and accurate beam that we want to use it for welding, cladding, cutting, or whatever. So, due to the high energy density and flexibility of the laser, a wide variety of materials can be built, materials are processed. All of you know that now, nowadays we are using laser for marking, marking parts, because uh, in a laser to mark parts, it is uh, set up to have a low energy source, low energy uh, input, and only a surface, a very, very small surface interaction. Just to, just to mark the small letters or figures in the surface of the materials. We can have also welding, like in automobile industry, is, uh, an aerospace industry is used a lot, uh, welding by laser, uh, so we need a high energy and we need that high energy to completely melt the materials to be joined. So we are going. To, we are we are we are talking about joining things, joining plates, joining parts. So we need energy to create that that weld in between them and to and to join them. We can also speak about cutting. In cutting, uh, the laser source and the and optics are set to have a very very high energy beam to fuse or melt and vaporize the metal because we have to cut. We have to destroy the materials, just opening them, just to cut. So you can imagine that uh, with, with that process, uh, the laser is set up to, to have the, as much, uh, as much um, energy as possible. And also we can have it 
to make it to, to, to perform some cladding, cladding or um, welding a surface layer. Eh? That's, that's, that's the name of the process to have a layer of material by welding. Not, not joining, we want to make a layer of protecting material by, by welding, that is cladding. So we are going, we are talking about laser cladding, right? So for the cladding, we have also high energy beam that interacts with the surface and we, it's not intended to penetrate a lot because precisely we are, we are looking, now we are going to see it, we are looking for uh, the smallest interaction possible with the substrate. That means that we are not uh, looking for deep penetration or keyhole welding. So uh, in that case, the optics and the laser have to be tuned to, to focus the laser beam at the outer surface of the material. So we are going to clad. We are, uh, today we are going to speak about cladding, okay? So the basics, the basic of laser cladding, I have just copied a couple, some picture of, of the internet, and more or less they are all showing the same things. Let's concentrate on the bigger one, uh, where you can see that here in blue, in light blue, it is, um, it is um, more or less um, uh, depicted uh, what, is, what would be the laser beam, right? The laser beam has to be focused in a conical shape. That's why it looks like that. And that focusing is just focusing the surface of the material to, to work. And in this, uh, together with this laser beam, we are going also to fit some uh, powder, some wire, some feedstock, talking in general material in the same place. In commas, in TM commas, we are using powder. So I am mostly talk about powder when I, uh, when I speak about the feedstock material, but nowadays oh, one can also use um, wire, okay? So we are using a uh, feedstock in powder shape that we are going to fit, we are going to inject directly to this point. This is the important point of the, of the cladding. In this point is going to have, uh, is going to, we are going to have the process of, of melting, joining and, and cladding. So uh, also we need some shielding gas, it's a welding. So the welding needs a, a clean atmosphere, a oxygen, oxygen free atmosphere to, to avoid oxidation, to avoid uh, defects, to avoid porosity. So we are going to use a shielding gas, mostly argon. And we are going to also have some uh, gas as a carrier gas, as a transportation gas of the powder, okay? Okay, so if we take a look, a uh, closer look at the, at the, um, at the point uh, where the cladding uh, is, is going to, to happen, this is the shape of the nozzle, the, the, the tip of the nozzle, the laser comes like that, but it's, it's, it's in the near infrared spectra, so it's not visible at naked eye. So we are not going to see the laser beam. So the laser is, beam is going like that in, in vertical. Then we can see a conical uh, shape. This conical shape is the, the powder flow, is the powder cartoon that goes from the nozzle to the focusing point here. We can play with, with this focus to unfocus the laser, to unfocus the powder, to, to make different laser cladding variations. But now, today, I'm going, uh, we are talking about standard cladding, so we are going to focus the powder at the same focus of the laser, just in the surface of the material. Uh, then the material of the, 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 the most surface of the, of the base material will melt. Also the, pow the powder will be melt by the laser and a layer, a coating of the feedstock material will be created on the top of the surface. Here we can see how that, uh, how that laser track, how that welding track or cladding track, how that track is overlapped to create a, a continuous coating, a continuous layer of that feedstock material. 
So as a result of this process, we have a, a high quality and great accuracy well track. This is also important to have in mind. What are the process parameters that we have to take into account to optimize the process? What are the process parameters that we are working every day in the lab uh, to develop new parameters for uh, new materials, new substrates, so we can play with a lot of them, but mostly uh, the, the, the most important ones can be, for example, laser power. Laser power that controls directly the heat input of the process, so it's, it's the most probably the most um, easy parameter to control and to, and to, and to change, to adjust the, the, the parameters to, to new, the new, new uh, materials. No? Also, we, have, we can play, we can, we can uh, set different things in the optical path. There will be some kind of lenses uh, that will focus and, and will uh, control the laser beam that, goes, that, goes, that comes from the resonator so to create that spot site in the surface. So we can also play with that optical pad. We can play with the powder feed rate or the feedstock material feed rate, wire feed rate, powder feed rate. We can play with it to, to, to influence, to optimize the uh, track geometry and, and the efficiency of the process. We can also play with cladding speed. That's the velocity of, of, the, of the torch uh, in respect uh, to, to the surface of material. We are, ha we are welding, we are cladding, we are working in surfaces and in, in linear velocities or speeds about from one to 1.5 meter per, meter per minute. So it's relatively fast process. process. Um, all these parameters at the end have an influence on the input, in the input of, of on the heat input on the part, and also in the melt pool size. The melt pool size is the size of the liquid portion of the surface of the steel that will be melt during the welding and that will solidify very, very fast after the cladding head has moved on from that point. So the melt pool size is also very important to, to have in mind and we are using it to control the process with a CCD camera. I will explain it a little bit later. So all these parameters interact between them and their, optimi their, their optimization is very important because each combination of substrate materials, stainless steel, carbon steel, with the feedstock material, stellite, inconel, each combination of these two uh, materials has to have a single or a particular set of parameters that will create the best uh, cladding material, the best cladding, cladding layer uh, for our, uh, our purpose. What are the advantages of, of laser cladding? More or less, the most, the most important ones are related to low heat input. Uh, due to that low heat input, uh, it, it minimizes residual stresses reducing the warpage or the formation of the parts. So it enables to repair slender parts, it's very, very, very thin, thin parts, very long parts, like, like uh, shafts without the risk of the formation and, and so on. No? That is very important in, in for the repair of finished parts. Of course, if, if, I, if I have to repair a part that is being manufactured and it's, and it's also in, in a rough, a very rough uh, machining state, probably no matter uh, the, the welding procedure that you use is because if you have some deformation, you, can, you, you will be able to handle it. But as soon as you are achieving the final dimensions and you have to weld, uh, this is, it becomes critical. So the laser is like a tool for us to, to, that enables us to, to repair these, these slender parts. Okay? Uh, again, due to that low heat input, the the extension of the heat affected, sorry, the, effect, the extension of the heat affected zone is going to be minimal. Uh, yeah, the laser, the laser cladding is the technique amongst all of them that will enable us to have the smallest heat input, the smallest uh, heat affected zones, so the smallest um, uh, risk of deformation. It keeps also a low dilution rate. 
The dilution rate is the amount of material of the piece of material that will be mixed with the base material and will create a kind of mixture in the well that is not is not the cladding material, it's not the base material, it's a mixture of them. So it's it's also very beneficial to have a low dilution rate in order to have the possibility that use just one single layer process. I mean, with just single layer process, we can have at the top of the surface of the cladding material, the composition, the chemical composition, and so the properties of the materials that we are, that we are looking for. Instead, on the other hand, for example, when using uh, tungsten inner gas, TIG welding, MIG welding, uh, submerged arc welding, or PTA, or plasma welding, we have to perform two, three layers to enable to have at the top surface of the cladding the properties that we are looking for. And this is also important. Due to that, that uh, small heat input, also the velocity of the cooling rate of the, of the cladding material is quite high. That means that uh, with the same material that, for example, with a stick electrode or a submerged arc welding, we can have, due to that extremely or higher cooling rate, we can have a, a finer microstructure, finer dendrites, uh, yeah, and at the end, this finer microstructure, this will give us maybe one or two uh, Rockwell C plus or uh, more than these uh, traditional cladding techniques like TIG or MIG or uh, um, uh, submerged arc welding, right? It's a completely automatized process. It's also very important to understand that it's a very accurate process that the, 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 the cladding will be, uh, performance will be the same at the end, at the beginning of, of the cladding, because uh, we are working with machines. We, uh, there is no welder, it's an operator of the machine that's just pushing the button and the machine is uh, performing the, the cladding. And finally, but not less important, uh, that because this is a welding process, we can qualify. We can qualify the, the, uh, that welding procedures according to a standard, international standard, and a lot of customers every now and then, and every day more, we, they are demanding us to uh, qualify the cladding process to be sure that uh, the properties of the cladding are the right ones, the affectation the, of, of the cladding to the base metal is reduced and everything is under control in, in our process. So we can qualify that uh, cladding process as a normal um, welding process. I'm going to, to talk a little bit about our equipment. This is very particular of, of our company. Uh, there are several uh, options in the market and our, uh, every, every day more and more, but we are using uh, quite, quite old, this is quite veteran now, uh, uh, laser. We purchased it uh, uh, many years ago. We were the first in Spain and one of the first in Europe to have that, uh, that kind of lasers to, to, to perform cladding services for, for third parties, for customers. So now it's still working. We have a second one now which is uh, going to be installed soon, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, nowadays we are using a, a high diode uh, laser, four kilowatts with a quite narrow weight lens. Uh, and then we have a, a pyrometer and a CCD camera to control the process. Um, as I told you, we are using a special tool, special camera that controls the, or is able to measure the, the melt pool size and keep it constant throughout the, the, the cladding by reducing the, light, the laser power. So it's, it's also a, a possibility to work in a control mode or an uncontrolled mode. Uh, we have, we, oh, there are several cladding nozzles available in the market. We have some of them. We have the standard ones, which are working mostly in, in, in normal direction. And then we have also a special, uh, what we call, lateral feed uh, nozzle that is used when we can we don't have enough space for the standard nozzle to, to go close to the surface to perform the welding 
so we can avoid that cumbersome um, nozzle and just using a small tube, rigid tube, to inject the powder where it, where it goes, where it should go. And also soon uh, an inner uh, coating uh, nozzle. This, this, uh, this um, uh, welding with climbing head, it's controlled by a CNC machine or by a robotic uh, lathe up to six, six meter long length. So we can, we can work in two stations, in a robotic here or in a CNC machine here or here, the same. So the cladding head, the laser goes, the, the laser enters to the cladding, to the optics. These are the optics. These black areas are the optics, the optical path. So the, the laser uh, comes from the resonators, from the laser source from upside eh, in this direction to the floor. And this is the collimator, this is the splitter to have some signal in the camera and in the pyrometer. This is, these are the sensors to control the, the process. And then here we have the focusing length. And at the end, from here to the point is the cladding nozzle. Everything is water-cooled, everything is sealed, and everything is controlled by this CNG machine in this case. Looking at the top, at the, at the tip of the cladding head, we have the cladding nozzle. Cladding nozzle is from is that point. It's copper-based, uh, it's made of copper alloy. Uh, it's also water-cooled. There are some shielding gases uh, through all, all these uh, tubes. Uh, we can feed uh, the powder, we can feed the protective gas, and we can cool down the, the nozzle and the optics over it. Uh, here, for example, we have uh, a conical shape of powder. So it's a powder, it's a coaxial powder feeding. Here, on the other hand, we have a three-hole powder feeder. And here we have that lateral, that, that side, 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 side feed alimentation of, of powder. And it's, there is no cladding. To, to be able to go into um, critical points where, not, there are, where there is not a lot of space. Another important issue, another important parameter of that process is, is the quality or the shape and the grand side and the morphology of the powder. And in this case, uh, we mostly we are using um, uh, spherical powders because uh, we need to transport pneumatically from the powder feed from the powder feeder to the point of the cladding nozzle by some tubes using argon so we need uh, a high flowability of the powder to to avoid uh, stacking to avoid um, uh, um, eruptions in, in, in the flow. So, so we need, we need that, that as much as, as possible um, um, spherical powders. Also, the grand size distribution is very important. We, can we are using powders from 50 to 150 microns. So um, depending on the laser and the cladding nozzle and all, everything you can play, you can choose between 40 to 80 or 20 to 60 or, or, or 100 to 150. So now we are using about like, 80 to 150, more or less. Okay, so once everything is controlled, once we have controlled the, the, the powder, or we have control or choose the right powder, choose the, the right parameters, now it's time to optimize. Um, to optimize the process, remember, not, not the whole process, just a combination of a feedstock material and base material. So what, 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 what are the parameters to, to play with? The, powder, the power, the powder feed rate, cladding speed, spot size, powder run size, gas flow rates. And what we, are do, what we are doing? So we are performing a series of clats, changing uh, one parameter every clat, every single track. And then we, we send it to the, to, uh, to the microscope, to the, lab, to the laboratory to perform cross-sectional cross samples of the, of the layer to, to, um, to check the porosity, the, the, um, the dilution rate, if there are cracks or not, the overlapping uh, for some internal defects or not, 
So we are, have, we are making a, metal, a metallographic analysis where we can calculate the dilution rate. Um, we can have also some, some um, uh, overlapping of images to have a, 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 a great overview of what will be the, the, the cladding from one side to the other side. Uh, we can also see that at the beginning, at the first um, track, there is no, even there's no dilution. At the end, there's a, a, a little bit of dilution because of the HIMP input. So we, we can control all these things by uh, observing the, the samples uh, prepared under the metallography, right? So also we are uh, controlling that, that heat affected zone. That, that, that heat affected zone is very important to, to avoid uh, a, a, um, a, a deep uh, change in hardness between the cladding and the base material to avoid martensite, to avoid quenching of the heat affected zone and to create a very brittle area where cracks can initiate and propagate with, uh, with, a, fatigue, um, with a fatigue mode. So, um, the depending, um, depending on, the, on the substrate mass, uh, the laser power and the overlapping, and all of, all from other parameters, we can modify the extension of the heat affected zone. Don't, uh, so uh, we are also playing with preheating. Um, preheat is always important in welding, and so it is in cladding. So depending on the weldability of the steel, the thickness, the cooling rate that we are uh, assessing, we can play with the preheating at the end to avoid that quenching of the heat affected zone. For example, in this Stellite 6 cladding over a construction steel A355, we are having a slightly quenched martensite uh, structure, but uh, just note that is, its, its length is about 200 microns. So it's, it's, it's really tiny uh, heat affected zone. It's a really tiny, um, a slightly hardened affected zone, but we can we, we can also play with it and control it. Another example of of our heat affected zone control is, for example, in this case we are cladding on a uh, Martin City standard steel over a carbon steel with a, a high uh, percentage of carbon, so its weldability is not very high. So uh, with, the, with the help of the preheating, we are able to keep that heat affected zone uh, hardness in, in an um, range below 200 at 280 uh, HB, which is uh, a kind of um, rule for uh, the qualifications according to a standard. Uh, it's not accepted to go above that uh, that 280 HB in the in the heat affected zone. Also, uh, because uh, as we can as we can um, have theoret theoretically one one percent two percent of dilution that means that that the adhesion that the that the amount of welding in the interface that the bonding between the cladding and the material can be very weak or very limited in space. Some customers are willing to check that uh, the cladding is going to withstand all the um, restrictions or the bendings that it, it can happen during the, during the working conditions. So we have adapted a, a bending test where we can see that um, even, if, even if we bend the, that plate at 180 degrees, for um, quite tough material like Inconel 625, the Inconel 625 cladding is not going to broke, nor going to peel off. However, when we use a much more hard one that, for example, uh, Estelite 6 coating, which is much more higher, much more tough, uh, much more harder, sorry, that, than um, Inconel 625, uh, when we bend it at 80, 180 degrees, it breaks obviously, but it's not, it's not peeling off. It's not 
there is no debonding of of the of the coating from the substrate. So it it means that the it's a true it's a true welding uh, process. Some customers also want to to test the performance of that cladding against corrosion environment, and we can perform some um, specific corrosion tests uh, using the the resin media of the customers. In this case, for example, we check the res the chemical resistance of Isterite six coating on uh, Australian stainless steel three sixteen in comparison with three sixteen, and the conclusion was that. Even that the Stellite 6 was not uh, overperforming, was not uh, increasing the, the corrosion resistance of uh, pure uh, stainless steel 316, we have a very, very, a very much more harder layer on it. So uh, 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 we have the good combination of corrosion resistance and wear resistance due to that Stellite 6 cl uh, cladding layer. So what what materials do we have uh, nowadays in our portfolio? We have, or we are using um, more or less every day, um, the following materials. Stainless steels, austenitic, uh, 316, martensitic, 410, 420, 431, duplex, one, one point, point 4462, Hot work tool steel, high speed steel, managing steel, nickel based alloy, Inconel 625, Hast alloy CD22, Hast alloy C276, cobalt based alloys, Stellite Ultimate, Trim alloys, Stellite 21 also, tungsten carbide, uh, plus nickel, nickel based alloy or plus Stellite 6 at uh, in a maximum uh, percentage of 60%. Of spherical tungsten carbide, we can also clad with blocky tungsten carbide. We can use different carbide grade chains, grade size to combine big grain size and small grain size, carbide grain size inside of the coating. Different nickel, chromium, bor, silicon, sex fluxing alloys, and mostly, uh, quite recently, we are working quite a lot with titanium. We are repairing titanium parts with titanium grade, grade one, and also we are using complex carbides, uh, vanadium carbides, titanium carbides, and molybdenum carbides for uh, special materials for hard facing application. Right? Hard facing it means very very high abrasive resistance to to some uh, kind of uh, hard work, harsh um, environment. If we speak a little bit about uh, how we can, um, or examples of um, process that we have already qualified with the customers according to that, that standard, 15609. So we have, for example, the first one, it, it was about 10 years ago for a very important uh, chemi um, um, ke chemical industry customer. We had to increase the wear resistance of this area in this screw pump, and we have to apply Estelite 6. So this was the first uh, qualification that we did, and it was a quite success. Uh, after that, we have been we have done about 10 to 15 qualifications. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of them. The first one is is uh, of a as Martin City 410 steel onto uh, carbon steel for uh, high speed train parts, quite critical. And the customer wants to, wants to have this cladding process in a very controlled way because of the criticity of the parts, right? So, uh, in this case, uh, the, the parts in these areas, there was a lack of, of dimension. There was, it has been a loss of dimension, so the bearing uh, was not fit enough, and uh, we have to restore the original dimension of these uh, steel parts. How? By, by laser cladding. Another example of uh, welding procedure qualification is that, that, that uh, deals with um, electrical engine, rotor shaft 
for a nuclear power plant in Spain, you can imagine that um, if you want to work for nuclear industry, you have to be very sure that your process is stable, is clear, is safe. So it's that that qualification is mandatory for them. So we have done several for them. And in that case, it's a uh, Martin City steel 431 onto a C45 carbon steel. Again, for the dimensional restoration in a shaft coupling areas. This is the, the area of the shaft that needs to be repaired. And we have to uh, set and apply for this qualification. And after all the destructive and NDT tests, we were uh, approved by the customers and then we, we perform the welding uh, with, with the customers and without problems. Now it's time because we are maybe slightly out of uh, late in time. Now it's time to, <clears throat> to, to speak a little bit about applications. There are hundreds of applications in the market. But you have to understand that we here in, in TM Comas, we are very focused in, 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 um, in, um, in repair of, of, um, of uh, turbo machinery, of rotating equipment. So we are using the laser mostly for, for compressor rotors, compressor uh, um, uh, turbine rotors, pump, pump shafts, and so on. But uh, we are also using, from time to time, the laser for agriculture, mining, textile, uh, uh, shipyards, uh, mining and uh, sorry, mining uh, steel mill industry, um, even even for for aerospace in, in some very very strange application. So to start with. Here you can see different kinds of rotors that we have uh, repaired recently. Um, and um, due to that a small heat input, due to that a small risk of deformation of the part, we are able to repair some um, big, big rotor, a big compressor rotor um, like that. Uh, we are able to perform the cladding in the suction eye uh, wear areas, for example, without having to dismantle the, each impeller from, from the shaft. We can, um, we are using the laser to, <clears throat> to repair seal, sealing areas that have been um, worn by, 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 by the seals or, or, by the, or, by the, um, or by the sealing media. Coupling areas also, uh, taking into account that we have some keyways and we have to protect the keyways and so on, with several materials, mostly uh, Martin Citic stainless steel or Incronel 625. More examples of this compressor rotor repair. In this, uh, you can see here we are welding in this area. In here, this is how it looks like after welding the complete area. Here, for example, we can see more closely how those, those laser uh, tracks have been overlapped perfectly, one close to the other with a 40 to 60% of overlapping just to create the whole cladding area. Examples, different examples of turbine rotor repair, okay. In this case, we are um, pointing our infrared pyrometer during cladding, and we are, have, we are having about 81, 100 degrees uh, temperature, which is nothing for a steel. Uh, another example of, of how, how precise is, is the, the laser cladding track uh, applied to, to recover uh, a shaft area. Uh, cladding materials for turbine shafts. So uh, again, Martin City is still 410, 431, Inconel 6 to 5, Estelite 6, and also recently some maraging steel, which has a 0% chromium. And it's very interesting for in journal areas to avoid 
while pulling and strange uh, behaviors in, in rotating shafts. Uh, if we are, because of the dimensions of the turbine rotor, if we are not able to work in our conventional laser cladding cell, we can move the laser to a CNC machine in the workshop and work during the night because we have to wear eye protection because the laser radiation is very harmful for the, for the site. So we, we need to, to work uh, during the night. And that was an example of a quite big uh, turbine rotor where we had to clad the, 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 the journal bearing areas. And then we performed some MDT and it, it, with it, we do not have any indications. Uh, again, um, again, an example of a turbine repair in this uh, journal. And here you can see other, other turbines that we have repaired with that of the turbine rotors eh? that we have repaired with laser cladding. Okay, again, in this case, we had to move the laser to the workshop to work in a, in a lathe and to be able to clad that big uh, rotor. Uh, in, on, onto a lathe. In that case, the uh, fits of material was uh, metacitic stainless steel 431. An example of the use of that uh, lateral fit um, nozzle, you can see in this example that we have to clad very close to that, that uh, disc, that axial wall in this and in this side of, of that, that area. So uh, the standard cladding nozzle was not able to go into that area um, as precisely or as close as we need. So we have to change that nozzle and set at a special nozzle without a nozzle, which is a nozzle free uh, focus length, dense. And of course we have to feed the powder through this arm, lateral arm, just enable us to performing the, 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 the cladding in this, in this narrow area, okay? Other applications where we can see that, uh, that uh, cladding is going to be applied in a very precise way is this, this real application in this uh, industrial chiller compressor, it's a skew compressor for a for a chiller machine, um, we, the, the customer has a very worn damage here close to the thread and we decided to machine to clean this worn uh, material clad with laser close to, the, close to the thread and without having to destroy the thread we machine that, that area to the original dimension and here we can see how it looks like after rank grinding and without having to remachine the thread. Other examples of uh, different rotatory machine shaft, crankshaft, crankshaft also, we are now uh, possible to repair crankshaft because of our, we are using a big robot with an arm and then we are moving the robot to a special cell, to a thermal spray booth, to perform the cladding of the crankshaft, in this case, Extelite 21. Uh, different sizes, uh, electrical engines, motor, rotors, uh, kind of fun also, kind of fun. Um, all, all of these areas, all of the repairs are always based on that, the dimensional restoration of the parts. That is mostly our most used application, dimensional restoration of, uh, of parts. Another example that is a very big two stages um, reciprocating compressor piston road with two areas here and there. It's about three and a half meter long, about 150 millimeters diameter uh, thick. So it's a, it's a big uh, piston road and we have to uh, protect it with tungsten carbide by HVOF. 
but because of the wear was so severe to apply directly a HBOF Thurston carbide coating on it, we have first to, to make a dimensional restoration with laser using a uh, Martin Citric standard steel um, and then grinding these, um, these two laser claddings uh, layers to uh, allow the HPOF coating to go uh, to be applied afterwards. Another example of a big uh, shaft or road in this case is a hydraulic piston road of a crane located in a harbor. So it has some marine corrosion damage and we decided to apply an ultimate that is a cobalt based alloy that is very used in oil and gas in, in offshore um, hydraulic piston roads. So we, we, we decided to clad that, that big piston, uh, piston road, uh, hydraulic piston road with ultimate material. For steel mill industry, there's a lot of wear on those industries because uh, for tra to transport the rolls, to transport the, the blooms, to transport the billets, uh, there are a lot of uh, rolls that are going to be uh, war worn by, by, by because of the, of, the, of the high temperature, because of the abrasive dust that is always in, in those industries. So at the end, the need of uh, hard facing is quite high in, in those industries. So we are working in the several and different applications through all the plant, through all the factory, and we are applying depending is for dimensional restoration, the very used uh, martensitic and stainless steels, and uh, also a special, especially the, the develop uh, mixture of vanadium carbide plus stainless, uh, stainless steel, estelite six coatings for all kinds of parts. In this case, uh, there are spooler jaws, jaws to, to, to grab the spools of, of, of wire, uh, rolling rolls, uh, corrugating bar flaps to deviate the corrugating bar uh, entering to a, to a step of the, of, the, of the process. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of possible of, of uh, using lateral uh, laser cladding in, in steel mill industry. For crushing, it's also a very interesting uh, technique. Um, we are uh, using it um, to clad tungsten, car tungsten, very, very hard materials, no? very, very abrasion resistant materials by laser, like tungsten carbide uh, plus nickel or niobium carbide plus vanadium carbide uh, in an in a iron based, uh, based alloy. So we, all, these, all these carbides, all these hard materials are going to be clad by laser in a very precise way onto different parts. We can clad uh, crushing hammers like, like this one, or this one, or this one. We can also clad a polymer dryer blades, like all these ones. We also can clad these um, crushing uh, or uh, um, grinding uh, wheels. So there is also a wide range of application in, in, in crushing in, in industry. Vegetal grains, polymer, uh, mineral uh, processing. So well, we are also active in, 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 in crushing industry. Also a very nice application can be the protection against wear and corrosion at high temperature. In this case, using Estelite 6, which is a cobalt-based alloy, very, very known in, in oil and gas industry because of the, the, the good properties at high temperature, uh, high hardness, high oxidation resistance, uh, low tendency of galling. So this alloy is very, very used. And we are using, in this case, this particular case, to clad, to protect these thermo well shells for petrochemical industry. So this is a hollow tube, three to five millimeter thick tube, that is, is made of mostly stainless steel that is going to be clad, as you can see here, is going to be clad in all its lengths with esterite cheeks. To, to be able to do that, 
we have to use that control. That control, that CCD camera that controls the laser powder because otherwise you will have to stop every few millimeters to allow the part to cool down because uh, the, the heat input is, is quite high in that two millimeters thick uh, of three millimeters thick tube. So due to that uh, CCD camera control system, we can uh, perform all the length of the thermal well uh, in, without stopping. As you can see here, we are uh, cladding uh, sets of 20, uh, 30 thermal well for uh, some customers. Also, as I told you, we have developed special parameters and special tools to be able to clad titanium parts with titanium uh, feedstock material. So we are restoring the dimensions of, of this uh, mixing shaft for a petrochemical industry that, that works in a, in a very uh, aggressive uh, ambient atmosphere. So we have been able to clad that length that this will be about 800 millimeters including these coupling areas with a, with a keyway with titanium grade one over a titanium uh, shaft. And I think that we are, uh, we are achieving the, the end of the presentation um, with the last example of a very particular job that we made also in a very urgent and critical way. We, had, we have a customer, it's a, it's a power plant, it's a, it's a natural gas, no? it's a combined cycle power plant nearby, that we had some problem in a, in a threat of this actuator or of a, of a gate valve. So we have to remachine the threat. Um, to do that, we uh, eliminate the, the broken thread. We made a cladding of this stainless steel, martensitic stainless steel uh, material because this material works at about four to five hundred degrees so we need a kind of material with good uh, oxidation resistance and some hardness at, at high temperature so we, we use that material we, we, we clad it with laser and then we machine that acme thread with a trapezoidal, trapezoidal shape uh, as, as a brand new and then we also machine that, that actuator, so we, 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 we will be able to, to deliver the customer with this as new part in, in just a weekend. So we have come to, to the end. Um, it's the right place and right moment to, to pose some questions. You can also uh, send me your uh, your uh, when your, your questions or your, your inquiries to my direct email, which is jnin at tmcommerce.com, or just call to your local uh, or regional uh, salesman. We have salesmen in Europe, in, in, in Africa, and, and in, the, um, in the area of the Persian uh, in the Middle East. So, probably we will have someone around. Um, <clears throat> there is one question of a of a um, of a customer of a possible uh, friend of us. How do you develop parameters? How long does it take? Well, to develop parameters, we obviously we we take benefit of our almost twelve years of experience. So we have a basic knowledge of combinations of materials. So uh, we take a basis. Let's let's let, let's let's set some starting parameters, and then we can tune. We can play with some with the, with the parameter with the cladding powder, with the speed, with the powder feed rate until reaching the optimum um, clad. How long does it take? It depends. Uh, depending on the combination, 
Sometimes the customers ask for a very, very special um, uh, feedstock material. We have to look for that feedstock material. It is in the market. If it's in the market, we have also capabilities to, to atomize the powder um, in a five kilo batch, for example, and create our own powder. Um, it depends on the complexity of the metallurgy, of the metallurgy, but we can be talking about maybe one month, probably, probably maybe less, maybe more, but around, around that, that uh, temporary uh, um, gap. Uh, well, apparently there, are, there is no more questions today. Um, well, let me let me thank you, everyone, for attending. Ah, yes. Uh, what is the porosity density do you provide for your customers? Well, the porosity is is it's a, it's a tricky thing. Um, sometimes the customer has its own specification. Sometimes it doesn't, and then we end up in an agreement of, of the porosity level that is acceptable for him. Um, if the weld is performed in an optical way, in an optical way, uh, it shouldn't be almost any porosity of in the clad. And the density. Well, the density is more or less about the same of porosity, you know. Uh, we we are we are trying always to to have zero percent porosity, but sometimes you have you can have some small porosity if the customer accepts that. If not, you have to keep on playing with your parameters just to find the optimal uh, set of them to to get rid of porosity. As as uh, our marketing manager is, is telling you uh, thanks for your attention and remember that we will be back in, in TM Commerce with more webinars and that this uh, full webinar will be uploaded in, in YouTube soon. So uh, thanks again. You can distribute it uh, to your colleagues and you can spread it because this technology is very important and very interesting and can be a, a, a nice, nice tool for for um, for uh, for your repairs. Thanks again. Take care, and and see you soon.